The U.S. Commission on Civil Rights was established pursuant to the 1957 Civil Rights Act to, among other things, examine matters related to discrimination and denials of equal protection. And because immigration very often implicates matters pertaining to national origin and race, the Commission has conducted several hearings over the years on various aspects of immigration, particularly illegal immigration. In fact, this year we're once again examining the effect of illegal immigration on black wage and employment levels. And Dr. Borjas talked about the group that is most isolated and most affected by it. And the evidence that we adduced before the commission shows that among those groups are black Americans. Uh, this year, again, as I said, we'll be examining that. But one of our most recent hearings was on the effect of illegal, of the effect of illegal immigration on black wage and employment levels. And the evidence that we gathered shows that unequivocally the wage and employment levels of black Americans are disproportionately adversely affected by illegal immigration, particularly when it pertains to the effect on black males. Uh, it should be noted, I think, that the witnesses that appear before the commission were experts and scholars on immigration that spanned the ideological spectrum. And while they may have disagreed with respect to policy and maybe matters of degree, Every single witness before the commission agreed that illegal immigration has a decidedly negative impact on the wage and employment levels of black Americans, particularly black males. And the evidence shows that the reason for this is actually pretty basic. Black Americans, especially black males, are disproportionately concentrated in the low-skill labor market and are disproportionately more likely to have no more than a high school diploma. Likewise, illegal immigrants, disproportionately concentrate in the low-skill labor market, disproportionately more likely to have low levels of academic achievement, and these two groups compete with one another in the low-skill labor market. The competition is often most fierce in those industries in which blacks have traditionally and historically had high concentrations of employment, such as hospitality, service, construction, agriculture, and blacks very often lose out in this competition to illegal immigrants to, um, for a variety of reasons that are self-evident, certain employers prefer to hire illegal immigrants. As Professor Vernon Briggs of Cornell School of Industrial and Labor Relations noted, it's not because low-skilled American workers, regardless of race, are unwilling to perform such jobs. It's that they're unwilling to do such jobs at the cut rate wages and sometimes substandard working conditions tendered to illegal immigrants, a cohort which is unlikely, highly unlikely, to then go and complain about those conditions to OSHA, EELC, or the Wage and Hour Division of the Department of Labor. And we see that this competition is most pronounced in large metropolitan areas. The effect, the deleterious effect, of illegal immigration on the low-skilled American worker is most severe during the current economic stagnant, stagnant times. Since the beginning of the 2008 recession, there has been an increase of two million working age blacks in the population. However, during the same period of time, the number of blacks currently in the workforce was also two million less. So that there's been no net increase in the number of employed blacks, despite a substantial increase in the black population. And what's curious about that, though, is during the same period of time, 4.4 million more foreign-born workers were employed in the United States. And this is, has substantial negative sociological implications also. Unemployment is linked to higher incarceration rates. Both are linked to lower levels of family formation. Indeed, research shows that immigration accounts for 40% of the 18 point percentage decline in black employment levels in the last several years. An 18 point decline is hundreds of thousands of blacks without jobs. In addition to depressing black employment levels, the evidence that we adduced shows that illegal immigration, frankly, any low-skilled immigration, tends to drive down the wages of jobs that are existing for, are available for black Americans. One study, in addition to uh, studies that we've reviewed from Dr. Borjas, a, an economist 
from the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta showed that for the increase in the undocumented worker population, there has been a $960 reduction in the wages of the average Georgian worker from 2007, between 2000 and 2007. Mr. Chairman, it's respectfully submitted that the massive influx of immigrants, both legal and illegal, has been demonstrably bad for the employment prospects of low-skilled Americans generally, black Americans particularly, especially black males, and continued failure to address this issue is not without profound and substantial cost to the average American worker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.